Hello, and welcome to Founders Navigating International Entrepreneur Parole, hosted by Alcorn Immigration Law. I'm Sophie Alcorn, the founder of Alcorn Immigration Law and host of the Sophie Alcorn podcast. And I believe the world should be a place where every person has the opportunity to follow their heart and build their dreams. And if that means that you want to be a startup founder, you should be able to build your company in the United States. And I'm here to help you make it happen. Please note that this presentation is an educational service by Alcorn Immigration Law. All information discussed should not be construed as legal advice for any specific action and is an overview only. So please be sure to consult a knowledgeable professional for assistance with your particular issue. And you can always reach out to us at Alcorn Immigration Law to book a consultation. The QR codes that you see in the slide deck are to reach out to us and start talking about your case and your options. So feel free to use those. Our team is growing. Uh, we focus on business immigration for startups and rapidly scaling technology companies. And I just want to set the scene with some immigration context before we dive in. Uh, lots of founders want to be in the U.S. because it's really the best place for a startup and specifically Silicon Valley is the best place in the United States to be a startup founder. Uh, you, If you are a founder, you want to be able to create things. You need to be able to conduct local research for product market channel fit. You want to be able to localize your product and make sure it can grow in the U.S. market. You want to have access to venture capital. Uh, you want to be able to go to market and scale in the U.S. and have the opportunity to become a unicorn. And personally and professionally, you know, you want to advance your career, do interesting projects and have that security and freedom for your family members, ensure your spouse can work and give your kids the opportunity to go to school. So all of these are very important factors for people, uh, for startup founders beginning to navigate their immigration journey. So Today, we're going to be specifically talking about a very exciting opportunity called International Entrepreneur Parole, and I will nestle it into the context of visas, green cards, founder relocation, bringing your family and bringing your team members to the United States. The typical path for people to come to the United States is first they get a visa, like an F1 student visa, a B1, B2 visitor visa, ESTA, which is the visa waiver program, or perhaps a work visa, like an H1B or an L1. From there, they're in the United States, and then they begin the process to start their green cards. And once they've had a green card, usually for five years, but there's an exception if you've been married to a U.S. citizen and living with them for three years, you can apply for citizenship in three years through the naturalization process. Uh, if you're abroad and you're not from a country with a long backlog, like India or China, it's even practically possible in a few years to get a green card from your home country without getting a visa first. But as time is of the essence for startup founders, international entrepreneur parole is a new visa alternative that can get you to the United States, not in a matter of years, but in a matter of months. So that's what we'll be exploring today. Uh, international students who are already in the United States are also eligible for international entrepreneur parole. You do not have to be outside of the U.S. to qualify. So it's a great option, too, for people who are already in the States instead of a STEM OPT or getting an O-1. Um, if your startup has some traction, it might be the perfect next step for you on your immigration journey. So it really doesn't matter if you are pre or post education, minimum viable product, funding, product market fit, being uh, having a unicorn valuation, IPOing, you do not need a Nobel Prize. Uh, this is a very entry level, early stage, wonderful opportunity for startup founders who are at the beginning. So International Entrepreneur Parole, or as I might refer to it, IEP, it's also called the International Entrepreneur Rule, so IER. So they're both kind of interchangeable, but the status is actually parole, so I call it IEP. Um, it's not technically a visa. Um, it's not technically a non-immigrant status, but it is the essential thing, which is permission to legally enter and remain in the U.S., and in this case, to work on your startup. So you can initially come for two and a half years, 30 months, and you can stay by extending it for another two and a half years. 
This program has a lot of history. It was introduced in January of 2015 by President Obama in the twilight days of his presidential administration. It finally became effective in July of 2017, but it was suspended by the uh, Trump presidential administration. There was a lot of litigation. Ultimately, um, it was put on ice for a few years in May of 2018, but it recently got resurrected in May 11, 2021. Uh, the Biden administration withdrew the rescission, and now USCIS is eagerly accepting applications and looks forward to adjudicating them as quickly as possible. Um, I've been a longtime proponent of this program. Uh, indeed, Alcorn Immigration Law has done almost 15% of the nation's IEP cases. Um, not all of our founders stuck with it, but everyone that did uh, got approved. They have decreased the processing time. So in 2021, it took several years for people to get approved, and many of our clients just had to get an O-1 or something else. Um, but recently, they got through their backlog, they're current on all applications, they have new guidance, and they're trying to streamline the process to make it as smooth and predictable as possible. So in May of 2024, we got some additional updates. Um, USCIS announced that they've either completed or sent a request for evidence for all previously filed IEP applications and associated travel documents. And as I mentioned, they said, we look forward to adjudicating applications as expeditiously as possible. And so, you know, what do you need to show? And I'll go into this in a lot more detail, but they also clarified recently that um, being in a critical and emerging technology, such as a STEM field, uh, this is kind of in relation to the President Biden's executive order on artificial intelligence from 2023. But if you're doing something in a critical emerging technology, that definitely gives you a boost um, for why you should get parole approved. And then uh, the other cool thing they did was they made it possible for us to get um, to use evidence from websites as proof that your company and your investors meet some of the requirements. So it got easier. Uh, the, they lessened the evidentiary burden for us to make a strong case for you using documents that are more accessible. So the purpose of this program is to create innovation, to help uh, create patentable technology, to spur research, to create high growth startups, to create jobs for US companies, and really to support you, the international entrepreneurs, the startup founders, um, who are gonna benefit the United States by forming new startups that are gonna create new jobs for American workers. So that's really important to our economy, our technology, and uh, we welcome you here. So who is qualified? Well, the basic requirements are that you have a U.S. company that was established within the last five years, and you, the founder who wants to come here, owns at least 10% of the company, and you are going to have one of those CXO roles leading the company. So, you know, CEO, CTO, COO, CPO, CCO, there's so many COs. Um, but take your pick, but leadership role in the organization. And so if you answered yes to those questions, then we move on to the second part of the analysis. Now, the monetary rates are going to be changing on September 30th. So if you want to apply before September 30th, you can get in now at these lower rates. But after October 1st, the rates are going to increase. So I'm going to tell you about that in just a minute. So if you wanted to apply in August or September of 2024, you will need to demonstrate either that you've raised about $265,000 from US qualified investors in the last 18 months. And so I'm gonna talk about who's a qualified investor or that you've gotten $106,000 of federal, state or local US government grants in the last 18 months. But here's the cool thing. These are not hard lines. So if you partially meet either one of those requirements and we have additional evidence that you guys have the substantial potential for rapid growth and job creation, you can still have an approvable case. So that part is very exciting. Now, if you are going to apply after October 1st, 2024, the monetary amounts are going to increase. So instead of 
265,000. Now we want to show $312,000 from qualified US investors. And instead of 106,000 in grants, we would want to show $125,000 in grants. And this is uh, an inflation adjustment. They have to do an inflation adjustment every three years. But still, once again, if you partially meet either or both of these criteria, and we have additional reliable and compelling evidence of your startup's substantial potential for rapid growth and job creation, you can come to the United States on international entrepreneur parole. Lots of different types of evidence we can use to show that you guys are going to grow. Uh, we can look at your user data. We can look at your revenue. We can look at crowdfunding or um, other investments from governments outside the U.S. or other investors outside the U.S., we can look at the social impact, you know, if you're going to have a benefit that's national in scope, uh, how you're going to support a particular region in the United States or industry. Um, we can look at you being a particularly, you know, great founder, like your academic background or prior entrepreneurial success. Uh, we can factor in if your startup is in YC or Techstars or another top accelerator or incubator. Um, and really anything else that can help us tell your story of how your startup has that substantial potential for rapid growth and job creation, then you're in. Um, now, there are a few conditions, like if anything changes with your company, you have to report it to Homeland Security. Uh, they can end your status if they find that you lied or something or that your company is no longer operational. Um, it ends automatically. Um, it ends if you stop working there. It ends if your equity dilutes. So, you know, you want to make sure that you stay above the thresholds, um, but we can always help you navigate through that. And then after the end of the first two and a half years, you're eligible for an additional two and a half years. Um, and the there are different eligibility requirements for the extension. We have to show either that you hired five people or you have gotten 633, call it $635,000 of revenue um, or 530K of revenue with 20% growth or other. So once again, very flexible, very forgiving. Um, lots of startups should be able to reach those numbers in two and a half years. Several forms are involved. We include different things for you know, depending on which country you're currently in and how you're getting to the U.S. And um, if you are married and your spouse needs to work, there will be a biometrics part of the process. And now there's some definitions that also come into play for eligibility. So entrepreneur, we already talked about how you need to own at least 10% of the startup initially. Um, on the extension, you only need to own 5%. Um, and then you are able to reduce your ownership, but you still need an ownership interest. The startup, you know, usually startups are Delaware C corporations, um, but theoretically you could have an LLC or a partnership qualify. Um, it can't be a uh, securities trading company. Um, you do have to lawfully be doing business. And then for the government funding, there's a variety of types of grants that you can access. Uh, it can be an economic development grant, a research and development R&D grant. Uh, it can be a job creation grant. Um, it has to come from some US government organization, doesn't have to be federal, can be state and local. And there's a variety of options like SIBRs and SITRs and the CHIPS R&D Awards, Department of Energy, National Science Foundation Awards. Certain states are building out these programs like the Ohio Technology Validation and Startup Fund. So lots and lots of free money out there, especially in emerging critical technologies and job creation, especially um, if, and, and at the local level, if you're going to build your startup in a particular area, you definitely want to maximize any local grants for your startup from that region. And once again, if you don't have the full like 125K, um, even if you got one grant for $50,000 from some US uh, federal, state or local government agency, um, if we had other comparable evidence, you could potentially qualify for IER. Now, if you're gonna go the VC or angel route, um, we do have to look at what the qualified investment is and what the qualified investor is. So it has to be good faith in investment. It can't be a friends and family round from an immediate family member um, and, or, or you know, one of your friends and family's companies, they want it independent. Um, 
the investor has to be a citizen or a lawful permanent resident or a U.S. VC um, that is owned and managed and operated with general partners who are U.S. citizens or green card holders. Um, and then we have to show that in the past five years, they made investments in startups of at least $600,000. That's usually pretty easy to do for an established VC or angel. And that at least two of those companies created five jobs or had $500,000 in revenue with 20% annualized growth. And so that was one of the things that was a little bit tricky for us to prove in some of the early cases, but they made it clear that internet evidence of the um, investors, other portfolio companies is a way to prove that. So we don't have to go in and like request the other, you know, um, documents from the other portfolio companies at this point. Um, after October 1st, once again, the amounts are going to change. So it's going from 600K to about 750K that the VC or angel must have invested in the last five years. And the portfolio companies either create five jobs or 500 from 500K of revenue to 623K of revenue. Uh, so if you would like to move forward on international entrepreneur parole, definitely, you know, you can get started anytime. Um, some of the factors to consider are your time to get organized and give us the information. There are government filing fees. I believe it's around $1,000 a person. Um, we might need some translations. We try to get you approved right away so that there isn't any request for evidence. Um, in this situation, there's no prevail prevailing wage. You do have to be employed by the startup, but there's no like minimum wage that you have to make once you work here. Um, no premium processing is available, but we can do expedite requests. So, you know, if a lot of money is on the line for your company, or if you could potentially, you know, create a huge benefit for your region, we can definitely get folks involved to try to do a expedite request. And hopefully with international entrepreneur parole, we can now get an approval in up to about four months. So theoretically you could move here within six months on this and you do not have to become famous like an 01. It's a lot easier of an application, um, costs less as well. And it's more objective than rather than subjective. It's, it's more determinate rather than indeterminate. Um, so that makes it a lot easier to navigate. Um, now, if you are interested for some of those other options, like an 01 eventually, uh, because you're from India and you want to a path to an EB1A green card, or maybe you want an EB2 green card in about three or four years. Uh, we do have a variety of programs at Alcorn Immigration Law, Legal Launch, which is our four week assessment and evaluation option. Um, we either credit the fees from that to your case if you're ready to go within six months, or, um, uh, but if we can't accept your case immediately, we give you a personalized checklist of things that you could work on to improve your qualifications within your field to become qualified. Um, and then I am going to move on to Q&A. Uh, but as this is a public webinar, I'm going to be ending the recording for that to help keep everybody's information confidential. But I do invite you to reach out. Um, my book is available on Amazon uh, via Kindle as well as paperback. Um, I recorded an audiobook version, so that's available on Audible. And um, my book is called Ask Sophie, The Founder's Guide to Visas and Green Cards. It's a bestseller. It goes through all the options we talked about today, whether you are comparing international entrepreneur parole, the O-1 paths to a green card like EB1A and EB2 and IW. Definitely invite you to take a look. And when you're ready to ask us your questions, you can always email us at hello at alcorn.law. You can check out our website at alcorn.law. We have a phone. You can do a good old-fashioned phone call, 855-546-0015. And also, you can always scan the QR code, and you'll be directed to complete our questionnaire so that we can sign you up for a consultation to get started, and we can talk to you about all of your specific pathways, options, pricing, timing. Happy to share all of that with you in a consultation. So thank you so much for listening. And please reach out to Alcorn Immigration Law. We are happy to help you with your international entrepreneur parole. Thanks so much for tuning in.